Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for a new video. So today I'm gonna talk to you about the uh, Korg for a new base vacuum tube synthesizer. And the characteristic of this scent is because it gets a vacuum tube oscillator basically and it got as well a sub oscillator that you can add vacuum tube saturation on top of that. So just before started, if you wanna power it, it works with a battery but as well you can use a DC 9 volt adapter. Just keep in mind that it's not working with the guitar one so you have to double check you need a special one. And then you have some MIDI in so that's great if you wanna sync with Ableton for example like I did and you have the sync in out if you wanna synchronize with other Volca. And then you have your iPod here, headphone. So one thing to keep in mind with this vacuum tube synthesizer is that you need to have something to really uh, represent the low frequency and to feel them. I say that because when I first started to use it, I plugged my headphone there and they are the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro and I couldn't really feel the effect of the sub oscillator and the saturation. And then I plugged my sub pack, which is basically like generating a vibration on the low frequency. And that was a big use difference. So just keep in mind that if you don't really hear the effect of the saturation, plug a sub woofer or something like to really feel the bass and you will understand how this vacuum tube works. So let's dig into it. So you have one vacuum tube oscillator and you can control the pitch here and you can change by holding function and pressing on the touch one. You can change the waveform either sawtooth or square. So it's kind of sounding the same right now but if you play like more like higher note, you can feel like the square is a bit more hollow than the Sotus one. I'm gonna keep the Sotus. And then also you have this sub oscillator. Uh, and you can feel already it's, it's adding way much more body and then I'm gonna turn on the saturation as well. Actually the saturation is on without and with yeah it's quite hard to hear just with the headphone or on speaker but with a subwoofer or something like reflecting the bass frequency you can really feel it and really add a lot of nice sub frequency so then we go in the voltage control filter part so you have low pass ladder filter some resonance Classic. So yeah, this Volca new bass uh, synthesizer is basically sell as a kind of uh, acid machine, or but it does way much more than that. It's not only like a acid kind of box. You can like just don't crank up the resonance, and you have this nice color and and harmonics made by the uh, vacuum tube oscillator. So then after you have uh, these three parameters, so it's the envelope, amplitude, the attack and the decay basically to modulate your filter. So the amplitude envelope intensify the attack and if you want something plucky, you bring down the decay which is here. And if you want something with a longer decay, same with the attack, you can having a short attack with transient or so let me bring it back. Let's envelope. And then you have the accent. I will come back to it later. It's related to the sequencer where you can control the amount of accent, which is basically controlling the volume and the amplitude of the envelope applied to the filter. Basically to access to this parameter, again, you press function. Or basically what is down the, the note and the number, you have to press function to access to it. So you can add pitch modulation on the L with the LFO, synchronize the LFO to the BPM and choose, yeah, maybe this waveform and this way if I... That's nice if I... I bring down and you can go faster it's nice as well if you go like this and you bring down the amount you can get to that kind of vibrato oh sorry
same if you switch to the arm you can have it kind of tremolo you can play with the square as well and get with the speed pitch Oh, with the cutoff as well, it works well. Or classic if you would use the triangle to have this kind of wobbly effect. And then you have drive here, which is I crank it up to the maximum already. Just have an extra distortion you have tone all right let me which is kind of a low pass filter and we're gonna time a little bit your eye frequency so if you don't want them i leave it open for the demo but yeah one thing i just realized i left the the reverb because i always it's just a bit of reverb because it's always helping to really hear how the sound the synthesizer sound with a bit of reverb and then you have so the tempo uh, to or the swing mode if you are in function and you have the volume that I always put at the maximum and then come the sequencer part so there is different way you can basically uh, just press record and play live the note uh, you can do that press record and just after this is like a chromatic keyboard and you can just and basically now what you can do is if you here you can select step mode you can activate or deactivate some of the step Right, so let me check because I think there is some glad activated. Okay. But one thing I like to do is basically if you press function and press again, it's activating steps. So basically, it's, you can deactivate some step, but it's gonna shorten your sequence. Basically, what I mean by that, if I deactivate this one, you can see it's following here, and at 15, it's coming back. So you can reduce the length but the cool thing is you can as well kind of choose choose them randomly and now you have a six step sequence and that's really a way i like to create sequence it's like either i select few notes for example i know that the the when i'm If I know I like oh if I like these three notes, what I will do is use another way to uh, sequence. So I'm gonna gonna clear all. The other cool way to sequence when you got the note you like, you press function and step and record so you are in step recording mode and now you can play the note and it will record them at each step so every time you play a note it will move to the next step so for example i want the five now it's on step two and i want the 11 and on step three i want the 13 and on four i want the 12 and then i want to be back to five and then six and then ten and what i like to do is pick up the note i like I don't really care about the sequence, but the cool thing now, press function again to exit and go to function activating step. And uh, this way, when you play, you only have the note that you record. So let me check. The phone was not activated. And you can just like. And I like to play until I found
for example, let's say I like this sequence and I will keep this uh, sequence. And now you can add some extra variation. So you can add some slide, which is really nice. So you can see where your steps are playing. That's really handful. So you can know. So I'm going to add slide here and there. You can control the length of the slide uh, if you press longer. You see now the note is blinking and so the, the slide is going to be longer. One thing I haven't mentioned is you can bring your sustain on or off here. So pretty thing function and on off sustain. So yeah, and same. So then you have accent, so you can add some accent to some note. I'm gonna crank up. And same, you have two level of intensity. You can hold it, and it's blinking, and it's uh, more. And then you have transpose, and you can pitch octave upper or two octaves, same if you press just one, or two octave. Or you can even press function and randomize it. I'm not gonna. So. But I'm not gonna do it for now. And then, yeah, once you have a sequence you like, you can. See, obviously, how does it sound with the rest of the track? One thing which is cool as well is if you press function and play, basically you can play like... And that's cool. And you can add some swing as well. So this same be gentle because if you go too much, it gets kind of weird, but a little bit. And then you have here is like to clear everything you transpose accent slide active step and all so yeah uh, i really like these sequences to be honest I, I hardly never use it like to record sequence live but it's always nice to just maybe play Let just three notes and so yeah i'm gonna show you Another way I like to uh, sequence because basically the, what I've just done before, like the, the sequence is super short. So when you use the, when you use the motion, it's kind of hard to uh, get something nice. But if you have a not too complicated uh, line and melody for... Let's say... Let's say 5, 12, and 13. So yeah, just go in step rec, and then I'm just gonna play. And okay, so, so let me play. And here I need to shorten the sequence. And then again, you can put like... And, tr 
Ich habe einen Spot, And now the motion sequence is a bit uh, better to play with. So let me activate the motion sequence. Really, really nice machine. The only things I would say that uh, it's annoying me is maybe there is no really sustain. So if you want to play a very long note, you see, even if the sustain on is engaged, like the notes fade, so it it can be annoying. And the thing is, cannot be able to. I mean, I didn't find out. Maybe I miss it, but to change the speed of the of the of the sequencer, like basically. To being able to play it like two times uh, slower, for example, here. But yeah, other than that, it's a really uh, little machine. Honestly, for the price, it sounds really great. This tube vacuum with when you can really feel the bass, it's really adding a very nice character to your sound, and and it sounds great. You know, it's it's not like a TB3 copy and. And I, and I really love this sequencer as well because it's super intuitive and you can really quickly transpose and add accent, glide and get different vibes with this tree function. So thank you very much for watching guys and see you soon. Bye bye.